How's everybody doing? We are live. Uh, they just worked on my cable. Hopefully we will be uh, doing very well. They gave me a new modem that should work faster, but also they're just working on the infrastructure here. So I hope everybody is having a fabulous day. I hope, did you all miss me yesterday? Because, I mean, I was, I, I we just didn't, wasn't going to deal with it. I just wasn't going to deal with it. Uh, but it is good to be here today. We are going to talk today about Time Magazine and American Science Link being healthy to actual fucking racism. Um, we live in a clown world. We just really, really do. Uh, I do think that people should let uh, like C.T. Fletcher and Mike Rashid know that they're racists. That they, you know, that they are full on white supremacists. That's how I'm going to say that from now on. White. Um, because that's how stupid that shit is. It's just ridiculously dumb. Like moronically dumb. Uh, but, uh, everybody, thank you for being in the chat. I did want to let everybody know we, you can still get our book beyond willpower. Uh, oh, hang on. I gotta go scoop up some, here we are. Here we are. We're going to just do this. There we go. So we've got multiple things going on. You can get no morbidity still at the ambrosiacollective.com. You can also get it uh, at Vitamin Shop. We are very excited to be partnered with Vitamin, Vitamin Shops. Um, Alan's late. Hope he's okay. I, I had the cable guy working there. Uh, but you can also get our book, Beyond Willpower, The Hunger Management Method. It gives you the app for a month, but you can also, slots are filling quickly, so we, only, we don't have that many more. But you can get three months worth of coaching for the price of two. We can literally start you today. If the holidays have gotten away from you and you need to build some healthy habits, please do, please do sign up today uh, because I'm worried that slots, we could have a rush on it. Slots are filling up. So please, please, please do. Uh, if you were thinking about getting coaching, the link is in the, the chat over here or in the description box below for three months special for New Year's. Get that right now. Uh, and we'll be... Uh, it is first come, first serve for the slots that are left. So please grab them. Uh, we have uh, dedicated ourselves to helping people build healthy habits based on uh, satiation, satisfaction, appropriate fitness level activities. Because being obese is, in fact, bad for you. And losing weight is, in fact, not racist. It's just fucking silliness uh, that people try to proclaim it is so here is, this is Scientific America. Uh, I just don't even, I, it's like, I don't even know how to approach this craziness anymore. I just, I, I really don't. I don't even get it. But this is Scientific America. Oh, I'm back. Okay. I don't know what happened there. Like I said, they are working on my cable. So please do. Oh, motherfucker. We might be out of cable again. So let me check. Can you guys see me? Can you hear me? Are we good to go? Yes, no, maybe so. Let me check here. Okay, it looks like we're on. Yes, you can hear me. All right. Uh, because we just clicked off there for a second. I wanted to make sure we were good. Uh, loud and clear. Good, good, good. All right. So this is Scientific America. Uh, scientific fucking America. This is on their Twitter page. The, high, the, the heightened concern about black women's weight reflects the racist stigmatization, uh, stigmatization of their bodies. It also ignores how interrelated social factors impact with black women's health. Does nobody like does nobody realize that this is in fact racist stating this? This is pretty much stating that you know black women are fat. Uh not to mention that it states that they can't do shit about it. Like that's how fucking crazy it is. I mean, how have we how have we reached a stage in society where these people think that they are combating racism by being racist? It's 
fucking amazing. Uh, it's always, always just fucking amazing to me. So give me one second. I'm going to go to the article just so we can see this ridiculousness. Um, I'm not, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to look at it all. We're going to accept the cookies, even though I hate doing that. So this is on Scientific American. You fucking full on sellouts wanting people to be unhealthy. Uh, prescribing weight loss to black women ignores barriers to their health because yes, all black women can't possibly get healthy. It's just so fucking, the racism is fucking palpable. It's just unbelievable. Um, black people and black women in particular face considerable health challenges compared to their their rates in other racial groups. Chronic cardiovascular, inflammatory, and metabolic risk factors have been found to be elevated in black women even after controlling for behaviors such as smoking, physical exercise, and diet variability. So that should mean that you should, in fact, fucking watch your health more. If you are predisposed, if you are metabolically predisposed through your genetics to have negative outcomes due to your obesity, you should, in fact, watch it more. You should infect. Hi, sweet thing. I'll move this stuff so you can then come join me. Awesome sauce. Wanted to say hello to everybody. You gonna come over? You gonna come up? No, freak. Okay. Um, so if you know, like, like, say, like, if you have a family history of heart disease, maybe don't get fat. Because it's even worse. Nobody should get fat. I mean, nobody should get fat. What's up, sweet thing? No, I got you. I got you. Say hi to everybody. Say hello. She had a good Christmas. Oh. There you go. Freak. She's a freak. Um, anyway, black women have also been identified as the subgroup with the highest body mass index, BMI, in the U.S. with four out of five classified as either overweight or obese. That is a systemic issue that is happening to black women. It, it is not because they are black women. Like, does everybody understand this? Part of this issue is that we, in fact, have completely accepted this shit. It's fucking ridiculous. Many doctors have claimed that black women's excess weight is the main cause of their poor health outcomes. Fucking shocking. Holy fucking shit. No, are you kidding me? So I, I think some fucking bald dude has been screaming in a car about that for the last five fucking years. <sighs> Often with fully tested and diagnosing them. While there has been a massive public health campaign urging fat people to eat right, eat less, and lose weight. Where? Where, motherfuckers? Where has this, where has this massive public health campaign been? Where, where, I, I would let, like, anybody from American or scientific American, so I got to use the air quotes, scientific American, any of you motherfuckers that can tell me where this massive campaign, mass, massive public health campaign urging fat people to eat right, eat less, and lose weight. Where the fuck has that been? Point, point to me. Point to me where the fucking massive outcry is for this shit. Anybody. Anybody fucking point to it. Please fucking feel free. This heightened concern that does not fucking exist about their weight is not new. It reflects the racist stigmatization of black women's bodies. So the heightened concern about their fucking health, as we just admitted earlier on the article, that is in fact bad for them. The heightened concern about their fucking health is racist. It's a racist stigmatization. Like, like they literally in fucking the paragraph above this shit, they just list, list it off that it's actually bad for them that they fucking, all these doctors claim, claim they even say that there's a campaign for it, which it doesn't fucking exist. And now we, it even says that they're at higher fucking issue. They have higher fucking problems for, for, that, for it. And we're racist for pointing it out. Nearly three centuries ago, scientists studying race argued that African women were especially likely to reach dimensions that uh, the typical European might scorn, the men of Africa were said to like their women robust. That's because they meant that they were well fucking fed. The men of Africa were said to like their women robust, and the European press featured tales of cultural events loosely described as festivals intended to fatten African women to desired unwieldy size. Produce the fucking results. 
Produce the fucking facts behind that, because I call absolute fucking bullshit. Curvy, yes. Muscular, yes. Fucking uh, you know, little in the middle, but got much back, yes. But not fucking fat. Not fucking fat. In the eyes of many medical practitioners in the late 19th century, black women were destined to die off along with the men of their race because of their presumable inability to control their animal appetites. The, I mean... Listing off what used to be racist doesn't mean it's racist now. We always knew that fat people died young. This is fucking ridiculous. This is absolute out and out ridiculousness. Eating, drinking, and fornicating. So like, it, they're just the, the fucking racist. Like the racism is just out fucking landish. I mean, it's so fucking crazy. I don't even I don't even fucking get it. Like I mean it's so fucking bad. Later some doctors wanted to push black men to reform their aesthetic preferences valorizing valorizing voluptuousness in black women. These physical claims validated their unhealthy diets, behaviors and figures and they're not showing any by the way. This is literally this is a scientific paper and at the end there is absolutely nothing and the article was originally published the racist roots of fighting obesity in fucking 2020. I mean, so they've just republished this shit to put it out. It's fucking crazy. Two, after almost three years of a fucking pandemic, two and a half years later in, into a fucking pandemic, they're going to fucking point out, they're, they're going to like try to say that it's racist to fucking want black women to lose weight. I want all people to lose weight. Everybody fat as fuck right now. Everybody. Everybody should lose weight. Every single, like every single fat person should be losing weight and we should be encouraging them to fucking do so. They're eating themselves to death and they're eating our, our society into burden. This is fucking ridiculous. And I'm going to say that this whole bullshit by Scientific American, I mean, if you want to take a look, by the way, when we go to their fucking thing, they got fucking crushed uh, in the fucking ratios. 1.7 million views, 421 people liked it. And the quote tweets are people fucking saying, what the fuck is wrong with you? Here's Mark right here. Or maybe just don't want black women to die. This is anti-science. I mean, uh, Zuby, just stop. All this fucking crazy shit. So here's what we're going to do next. Because this shit, this shit is fucking crazy. Now, first, I'm going to point out something. I want everybody to see this. By the way, if you're not following me here, it's still Moonbirds. Because they can't seem to fucking figure out how I can change my name and profile picture. They're working on it. But... Sam, how the fuck you doing? Uh, I saw it. It was written by Sabrina uh, Strings and Lindo Bacon. Fucking amazing. Like, this is uh, these two fat activists who literally live in a fucking fairy tale land are, in fact, writing fucking papers for Scientific American. Fucking crazy. But this is Time Magazine. This is Time Magazine. Living a longer life is white supremacy because at one point in time, two days ago, they put 15 minutes of exercise a week is linked to longer life. 15 minutes of exercise a week is linked to longer life. That's how little is needed to actually try to live a longer life. You should get much more than that. But then about two and a half hours later, they said six other surprising facts about the history of fitness in America. And the title is The White Supremacist Origins of Exercise in the United States. Can't make this shit up. So the exercise is white supremacist. Living longer lives makes you, according to Time Magazine, on the 28th of December in 2022, a white supremacist. Living longer life and exercising. It makes you a white supremacist. So all you fuckers out there, I don't give a fuck what skin color you are. I don't care how you were born, where you were born, what how your what your parents looked like. I don't care what your skin is. I don't care what your hair like. You're a white supremacist if you work out. This is the clown fucking world we live in right now. It's fucking insanity. It's literally fucking crazy. Somebody just pointed out it should be 60 minutes a day. Julian just yeah, it should be. Everybody should move for 60 minutes a day. 30 minutes is a good habit to start with, then you build up to 60. So here's what we're gonna do. Now we're gonna go to this article.
I when when I fly to California this 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 summer this summer and we go to uh, uh, we go to we go to Mark's Mark's and CT's gym. I'm got, I got I'm gonna have to remind Mark and uh, Mike Rashid that they are in fact white supremacists. Yeah, they're they're they're, they're white they're white supremacists. CT Fletcher, Mike Rashid, white supremacists. Do, 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 do these people, do, this woke bullshit, do they never, ever, 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 ever get tired of fucking uh, out and out being overtly fucking racist in their impl implications and trying to use black people and minorities to their benefit? Do they never get tired of it? It's fucking, I mean, do, do, this is how weak their fucking arguments are. If you have to try to tell people that being in shape is racist. Why do you want people to die young? What, what, like, wh how is this, this massive push that the fucking scient uh, scientific American was talking about? How is this the big push for to get people thinner? How? How? Where? Where? Where the fuck is it at? Because speaking as somebody that over in over half, like for over half a fucking decade, I've been pleading with people to lose fucking weight. Pleading. I have been canceled. I have been threatened. I, they have fucking hacked my bank accounts, hacked my fucking Twitter, hacked my, they've tried to fucking all sorts of shit. They have done so many things. They've literally called the fucking police to my fucking house. I mean, they have doxxed me, all this bullshit. Where in the, by, but for me saying you cannot be fat and healthy, this is what, what's happened. And when you complain about it, when you try to do something about it, they literally ignore you or they make it worse. And where's this fucking huge push? Where, where, where the fuck is it? There, right now, right now, we're on YouTube. We're literally on YouTube. I can guarantee fucking tee you that if you go to any Nikado avocado eating 10,000 fucking calories while being a fucking fat ass fucking slob of a human being, gorging himself, saying outrageous shit all the fucking time, I guarantee you his videos are going to be in the recommended fucking file. They are going to have premium fucking ads on them. Premium. The best paying ads they can fucking find. And when people talk out against it on platforms like YouTube, like TikTok, like fucking uh, Instagram and Facebook. Facebook, Facebook, I have literally had a month ban for calling somebody fat when they weighed like 400 fucking pounds. It's insane to me. It's insane. I have been called, and this is not new. This is not new. If you don't believe me, look up the uh, look up the documentary that both Jillian and I are in about uh, the dark side of fat acceptance. They've been calling me a racist for fucking years for telling people to lose weight. I'm the worst racist ever out of my entire crew, out of the entire crew. Crystal and I are the only white crew uh, eating loads. Do you want to come live with me right now? Don't say another don't say another word about yes or no. Because if you want to fucking come live, you can and state your case. You can absolutely fucking come live and state your case, bitch. Feel free, feel free if you if, say yes or no. Say yes or no. Are we living in a Monty Python sketch? No shit. No shit. No fucking shit. Fucking ridiculous bullshit. Fucking ridiculous bullshit. So we're going to go to this article. I don't know if I'm going to be able to read the whole article, but it says... How did U.S. exercise trends go from reinforcing white go from reinforcing white supremacy to celebrating Richard Simmons? That in, that evolved in I mean, what the fuck? Uh, that ev that evolution is explored in a new book by his, by a historian of exercise, Natalia something something, author of the book Fit Nation: The Gains and Pains of American Exercise Obsession. Nowadays, at the beginning of the of every new year. Many Americans hit the gym to work off their holiday feasts, 
This momentum usually starts to fade in mid-January, according to 2019 analysis. We're going to take care of that shit this year. But such New Year's resolutions are pretty new, as is the concept of exercise as a way to prove, uh, improve body health. It's not really until the 1980s that you start to have a consensus that everybody should be doing something, some form of exercise. A professor at New York, uh, new, new School in New York, that's partly the result of women's movement in 1960s and 1970s, which fought Title uh, IV, allowing girls to play, uh, allowing girls to play sports. That pushback on notions that girls and women aren't capable of doing vigorous exercises because they're fragile. Perfect for reading on the treadmill or stationary bike. The Blow Conversation outlines the earliest ideals of exercise, delves into the history of various popular workouts, and outs uh, and outsizes influence of Richard Simmons. So let me get this right. Nobody exercised before this. Like, nobody around the world exercises. We're, we're saying that there's no exercise in predominantly uh, non-white countries. Like, this is fucking ridiculous. And I'm going to point out again that the article that they published right before this is fucking crazy. Rachel, would you like to come live with me? Don't say another thing unless you come live. And here you go. You have to have your camera on, but you get to say whatever the fuck you want. Feel free. Feel free. So again, Time Magazine. I mean, all these fucking people are bitches. Fucking weak ass, no conviction to their fucking, they're just fucking weak ass fucking people. Weak, weak, weak ass people. Just really fucking disgustingly fucking pathetic. Your parents have got to be ashamed of you. Like, got to fucking be. Anyway. Yeah, so this is, again, I just literally wanted to point out how fucking asinine this shit is. Uh oh, there we go. Look at this. I mean, literally fucking look at this. 15 minutes of exercise is linked to longer life. If you exercise, you're a white supremacist. Stupid, st literally stupid, fucking ridiculous. Like, it's just so full of shit. It's just so ridiculous. So... Where are my, where, where are the trolls at? Keeps, you know, you can come on live with me and, and debate. I, I, I mean, let, let's do this shit, you know? I wonder if any of these people ever heard of jogging while black. <laughs> That's a fucking funny skit too. Uh, but it's a very serious fucking thing. Uh, he won't go live, but he but he calls you a crybaby. Exactly. They're fucking pussies. All of them. Fucking weak-ass pieces of shit. Bunch of little fucking hoes. You know, it's probably the same two people that keep creating all these fucking accounts because they can't, they literally are so fucking terrified to put their face on camera that it's just patheticness. It's, it's ridiculousness. It is. The trolls came in and call you a crybaby and then run when you call them out. I mean, that's the fucking, it's, it, it's what happens all the time. LeBron is what, yes, LeBron James, white supremacist. Every, every, you know, uh, every, every black athlete, white supremacist, white supremacist, you know, fucking sadness. I've seen plenty of non-white people at the, at the gyms. I mean, like it's, 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 my thing is, it's like it brought, it draws way too much attention to people's color. It should not be this big of a fucking thing. This shit was fucking solved, people. Not solved, but it was on the fucking way. I, in my lifetime, have seen real fucking racism. I was born just a few years after Jim Crow laws were fucking abolished. That didn't change people's behaviors necessarily. So racism was a real fucking thing. And these people fucking minimizing it by throwing this word every fucking place drastically underplays the plight that people have actually faced in our society with real ass fucking racism. Real ass motherfucking racism. This diminishes it completely by trying to pretend that being healthy, like what at what stage 
do these fucking lemmings see that these people want you fat, out of shape, and unhealthy? Like, at what stage do you not recognize the fact that these people, in fact, want you, especially, it appears, uh, it appears that especially black people, unhealthy, you know? Go live so I so I can dox you. How is it doxing you if it's just your fucking face, you fucking pussy ass hoe? I mean, for real, how, like, how how the fuck is it doxing you to go live? Like, you need your you like you aren't you can't say something with your face and name attached. Really? Like, well, I mean, that's fucking sad. So now, unfortunately, that means you get a block. If you get, I mean, what the fuck? Let's fucking do this shit, bitches. <laughs> For real. Let's fucking do it. Like, if you got something to say, you can say, I'm get. it's just the internet. It is li- like, I can't actually reach out and touch you. It's just the fucking internet. You realize this, right? Oh, no, I wasn't swatted. No, I wasn't swatted. But uh, but they did they they've doxed my company's address before plenty of times plenty of times right I mean it's fucking ridiculous it absolutely is yeah a lot of trolls mad that caring about healthy bodies means all racist bodies that's the thing like body positivity doesn't give a fuck the color of your goddamn body. Body positivity should be about being healthy. I just rolled over my toe. That hurt. Ah! But body positivity should be about taking care of your body. How is that fucking racist? Anybody. I don't give a fuck what color you are. I don't care. I don't care what your fucking parents look like, what fucking nation of origin they are. I don't give a shit. Everybody should try to be healthy. How, 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 is, how is this a negative statement? Anybody. Any, any of the fucking bitch-ass trolls that are left in the fucking comments. Any of you fucking literally street walkers that are too fucking afraid to fucking present your own face on fucking camera. It's not even like we're in person. I mean, you, you won't say shit. You literally won't say shit online with your face attached. Why should I give a fuck? It's not like you're going to come up to me in person. You're too big of a bitch to say it on fucking line. That's fucking pretty fucking sad. That's pretty fucking sad. Pretty fucking sad. It is. Jason the Beast. Uh, whenever a white person says anything about black people, even the truth, how, how it is now is considered racism. I know. It's fucking, it's fucking sadness. Sadness, sadness. I don't like the light when you turn it on. All, all the cockroaches scatter. They can't, I mean, I, the thing is, what the fuck? At, at very worst, they're going to say shit and I'm going to be like, okay, you have a right to your opinion. I mean, you sound stupid as fuck, but you have a right to your opinion. What the fuck? By the way, I'm doxing myself. I have selfies on Twitter and Insta under the same name. It's, I mean, it's it's so bad. Like, don't get me wrong. You want to you want to remain a, a, you know, anonymous online and shit like that? That's fucking great, you know. But why should anybody give a fuck about your opinion if you're not going to put your fucking name and face to it? Like, I you know, I I understand that you have a right to it. Say everything you fucking want. I you know, you can fucking say what the fuck you want about me. I don't owe you my platform to do so. So I am doing more than what I think other people do. Other people just ban trolls. I'm giving you the opportunity to actually fucking present yourself to me as a person and say the shit you fucking want to virtually to my face, not even in person, just virtually. Although if you wanted to say it to my face in person, feel fucking free, pussies. What about the Bopo people who are against racism because the racists aren't all that different biologically, but minorities are suddenly more like, likely to be fat? Oh, no, doxing. Probably got that word from the crybaby handbook. No shit. No fucking shit. That's why I changed my to, to my real name and photo. Like, the thing is, like, I get why people necessarily don't want to have what they like what they say online affect them but in reality people don't if you're not going to put your name and shit behind it why the fuck should people listen to you like 
I mean, you can say it, you can feel free. They don't owe you a platform. I do not, you know, if you don't want to put your name and stuff to it, and but you want and you want to be like state your opinion, that's great. But you, I mean, no matter which side of it's on, you should not expect people to fucking want to actually entertain you. It's just, it's not, it's not fucking for real. It's not real. Regarding Rachel Dole's, doesn't pretend that you're black when you're actually white uh, uh, constitute racism in itself. What about trans racism? What about trans racial? Shouldn't she be able to identify as black? I mean, if people can identify as fucking, and I know what you're saying, I'm just fucking, I'm on a tangent. If people can, um, if people can identify as something they are literally chromosomally not, uh, people should be able to get a tan and identify whatever fucking color they want. I have no, nothing against it. What's going to happen to Cotto Avocado in five years? He's not going to be here in five years. If he keeps going. If he keeps if he keeps going, you know? Brent. Healthy in every race. Exactly. What about hungry fat chick? I don't know. Oh, oh, the girl that's with that's with him sometimes. I, I mean, it's fucking crazy. Isn't that just blackface? I believe it is. I mean, I, I like my thing is I, I think that that's fucking that's bullshit. It's wrong. Um, but I do think uh, that to a great degree, uh, you know, it's also like it's just woman face when people try to claim they're a woman and they're a man. You know, uh, I've lost 150 pounds with healthy diet and 45 to 50 minutes of racism every day. No morbidity. Brent, very fucking good job on the racism. Fucking crazy shit. That's how fucking sad. And notice, notice the the trolls are no longer commenting. No, notice they're gone. That's how fucking. These are the same people that are going to say this shit. Like, oh, working out is white supremacist. Uh, you're a white supremacist if you want to work out. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Because what? Because fat phobia is born in racism. Fucking a bunch of fucking fat ass white people calling you racist because you tell them to lose fucking weight. If that is not the fucking envisionment of fucking racism, I don't know what the fuck is. Like when somebody says you're racist because you told me to lose weight, weight when they're white, that is fucking racism. You're assuming that all black people are fat. They're all black people have a hard time losing weight. And then fucking, uh, and, then, and then you're fucking going to steal fucking racism when you've been, you're, 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 the most privileged people on the fucking planet. You can afford enough and have access to enough food to glutton yourself into fucking obesity. And then you're going to pretend like you're some sort of fucking marginalized goddamn fucking group, equating it to racism. Fuck off, fat hoes. Unbelievable. Unfucking believable. No shit. Honestly, I shouldn't think where we'll be. Uh, in a decade with the status quo. It's fucking terrifying. We, we need a fucking course correction very, 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 very quickly. Like, we need a very serious course correction extremely quickly, you know? Uh, if we And if we don't get it, it's going to be bad. Like, the way... I mean, there's already... Uh, there was another thing, too. Give me one second. Let me see if I can find it. While I'm trying to find it... Go get yourself my book, Beyond Willpower, The Hunger Management Method. I highly suggest if you are having a hard time developing consistent and lasting lifestyle skills that get you and keep you at a healthy weight without feeling like you're on some sort of extreme diet or feeling like you're on some sort of uh, uh, massive restriction, we can help you. Right here are three months. It's three months for the price of two daily communication, weekly video conferences, and we will help you adjust your lifestyle bit by bit. Take advantage as quickly as you can while the, while the slots last. Please do. I want to look up one more thing here. Because, hang on a second. Let me see if I can fucking find it this way. Me and Mark text all these things back and forth. Here it is. Here it is. Give me one second. Mike B, you have to have your camera on, buddy. I don't 
other people on without their camera on. So figure out a way to turn your camera on, and I'll let I'll I'll let you come right on in, this motherfucker. Oh, and by the way, Runway, thank you. Uh, whoop. Racism caused me to eat steak and eggs every single day. Let's see here. And I wanted to go to this. The CDC warns of a surge in youth diabetes. Gee, who would have fucking warned people about that? I mean, who, who would have possibly warned people about that? You know? Like, I, I, I don't fucking get it. Like, oh, me and Mark. Uh, I warned people that the, the wave of type 2 diabetes that was coming was going to be fucking biblical. I mean, absolutely fucking biblical. We cannot continuously fatten all... Uh, here's me. I tried to warn people. This is from May 13th of 2021. The wave of type 2 diabetes and other obesity-related diseases, uh, uh, obesity diseases and the issues that come with them, that is the own, that it's on its way from the massive weight gain and sedentary habits from 2020 in the next few years will make the inflated COVID numbers look tiny. And they absolutely fucking will. They abs it absolutely will fucking happen. Um, I'm doing cultural appropriation at the gym, and it looks like you sent me $225, but that's not dollars. So, but thank you very much. I appreciate any tip that we get. I appreciate it. You're going to get your no morbidity this week out fucking standing. Please do use the code capital M, capital F, I N G, capital C, capital O, capital O. Uh, Mark, Mike, where'd you go? I had a, a mic here that didn't seem to want to turn on his fucking camera. Uh, I, I, I wish you would have. I, I wish you would have. Because I'd gladly go fucking live with any of you motherfuckers that, that have anything to fucking say. Uh, let's fucking do it. Mike, you have to have your camera on, buddy. You have to have your camera on or I'm not letting you on. Let's see. Let's see here. Vlad, I do intermittent fasting. Vlad, what was that? I have a hard time with snacking. Vlad, we help coach people on that at our coaching, but also no morbidity seems to work very, very, very well. Give me one second. I got two people. Uh, hello, Alan. No web laptop. No link desktop. I then I'm not letting you on. I, I hate. I'm not. I don't let people on that don't show their face, dude. So, uh, I, 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 I'm not. That is that is my one rule, and I'm not doing it. So you're not coming on. Uh, mm -mm -mm. But Vlad, you can do intermittent fasting. I'd like like that. The book talks about this. If you buy the book, you get into the support group. You can send me a message and ask a little bit further. Uh, but if you have a hard time with snacking, the point, the goal would be to stay satiated. So, uh, you don't snack and also try to replace your snacking with drinking non, uh, non alcoholic, non caloric beverages too. If people have a tendency to snack because it's a hand mouth thing, having a water bottle next to you at all given times helps out with that tremendously. So make sure if you can functionally do one thing, I just did a quick short video about that later on, earlier on the day, where the most actionable thing you can do about your health is take control of your hydration, try to get at least one ounce of fluid per pound of body mass a day, uh, and you will uh, you will snack less. It's better for your sleep, your, your uh, kidney function, liver function. It's better for your internal organs. It helps with stress relief. It helps uh, your muscle recovery. It helps with so many things. So try to do that. that that's, a, that's a starting point. Uh, would you see, would to see you collaborate with star sand? She needs help. She's up to 400. She would listen. I'll reach out to her because I've had her on before. So I'll reach out to her and see, see what I can do to help. Um, when it used to be, when it used to be called adult, adult onset diabetes, I'm under 40 and we had, uh, have no type of type two diabetes in my school. That's fucking, I mean, it's, it's getting out of fucking hand. It just absolutely is. Uh, I only put uh, on one pound over Christmas. Mega happy that that wasn't worse. Probably because I haven't been I uh, haven't been drinking loads of water. You have, yeah. It just get some water in you. It'll also help pull you out. You might have just have even some extra uh, food mass in you that needs to get going too. Um, let's see here. Back in 2017, when I started following, uh, you spoke about the number of illnesses and diseases coming. 
I knew, I knew it, and I've been on my game this whole time. I've been warning people about this for a long time. The wave of illness that's already here, like that's the thing, it is already here. We have already started to see it. It is already taking over, yet alone the fact that we absolutely are just getting worse. And articles like we just saw where they tried to in any way discourage people from being healthy and losing weight is in fact fucked up. Now, Mike is saying he is at a, a, a desktop or whatever laptop and has no camera, although most laptops have camera, by the way. Um, can you send me the link again? Not showing in my laptop and cam will work. Sure, I'll send the link again. I'll send the link right now. There you go. Racism makes me uh, makes me to run a 5K in 21 minutes and 47 seconds as a 45-year-old. Run, Blade. Get the fuck going. That's fucking awesome. Hell the fuck yeah. Hell the fuck yeah. That's outstanding. Let's see. Uh, I was a ripped kid. I didn't uh, get fat until I started eating the sad diets. That's most people. Most people. Alex, here you go. Hello. How you doing? Oh, not too bad. So I um, had a couple of thoughts about this whole, well, if you're uh, encouraging people to engage in health habits, it's racist. And like, these are the same people who make the end. I, you know, like I study biology and I understand that, you know, humans as far as race goes are not so genetically distinct to technically be different races in the sense of like a distinct subsection of a population like the different right. skin tones and things like that are very minor genetic variations and so you know from a biological perspective different races of people aren't really that different and i agree with the people who make that argument but these are the same people who also make the argument that for biological reasons people of color or you know different minority groups are more likely to encounter health problems associated with being fat and they're just more likely to be fat when you can't make those two arguments at the same time because yeah. if people are so genetically similar that it doesn't make a difference what color their skin is then that there's no genetic basis for black people being more likely to be fat than white people right the, and, I mean, it's, it's it's not it's not based in reality you know right like people I mean, there may be some reasons such as like the way that people are socialized and conditioned to run food that makes a difference in, you know, some people being more fat. Al Alex, I don't want to say, Mike, I see you down there. Give me one second. All right. Go ahead. Um, they, um, you know, might be more likely to overeat just because of the way they were raised or what they have been, you know, but it's not racist. I would say it's more racist to allow people to be complicit with having poor health because if black people or you know people of different ethnic minorities are more likely to suffer from obesity and the health complications due to it than just saying well that's perfectly fine that's almost like okay well we're fine with these people dying at earlier ages and having yes. poor quality of life that's more racist than trying to encourage them to be healthy that is awesome i, I, I completely completely agree it's it, it, it's like we've been devoid of critical thinking. I thank you for your input. I really, I really, really, really appreciate it. Uh -huh. um, you should come on again sometime. I tell you what, I'm going to plan something where a bunch of people can come on. And we can just have a group discussion. I am going to get to, to Mike though because he was trying to figure okay. out how to get get on here first. Alex, okay. thank you so much. I see you. On, I see you in the in the comment section all the time. It's great to put a name with a face. I appreciate you guys very much. Uh -huh. Thank you. And Mike, how are you? Doing pretty good, Alan. It's your uh, arch nemesis here, fitness philosopher here. I've just been wanting to talk to you for a long time, and so I hope... What's going on? Hey, not a lot. I just, you know, I, I you know, we all kind of struggle to have a good fitness... Uh, and, by, and by the way, you're not my nemesis. I barely know you exist. Oh, yeah. You haven't seen my videos on you? No, I don't, I don't watch videos on me. I don't care. Okay. Well, my last video was explaining how you're cardiovascularly unfit, hmm. and... Uh, I because you're, you're, ab you're absolutely entitled to your opinion. Okay. So can you put on a, a 80 pound backpack and make it up a flight of stairs without being totally gassed? I don't know. I have never tried it, but possibly. Because, uh, the reason I'm saying that is because on, on, on the videos, flight of the stair, depends on the flight of stairs, that sort of thing. Yeah. Cause you said on two, it's two cases so far that when you weighed 280 pounds, you couldn't make it up a flight of stairs quote without uh, almost passing out. Yeah. And then you you kind of reiterated on this you on some second video you kind of went into more detail you said you were 
sleeping and someone knocked on the door and you you were so overweight that you uh, uh, had to hold your breath. You were had sleep apnea and you had to hold your breath to put on your shoes. And then you, by the time you yeah. made up the flight of stairs, you were just absolutely out of breath and gassed. Mm -hmm. Well, on my video, uh, the, and you were down uh, 45 years old. At the time, um, I was probably 47, something like that. Yeah. Okay, I'm 60. I went and put on a backpack on my video. I went on and put, put a backpack and made myself 285 pounds and went up a flight of stairs without absolutely any breathlessness at all. And the reason I think that's the case, Alan, is because you completely, even though you uh, you recommend all these healthy things, you say uh, get plenty of sleep, uh, mm -hmm. try to be as, as as lean as possibly, you know, take no, your body I don't weight say down. As, I don't say as lean as possible. I say I say keep your body weight down. I actually tell people yeah. being too lean is unhealthy. Uh, sleep. It's kind sleep. of odd because it seems like you, it seems like you watch a lot of my videos and you only hear what you want to hear, but keep going. No, yeah, but no, you, you also say get sleep, eat plenty of uh, uh, hydration. I know, it's food, horrible. All these healthy things. And then you say yeah. uh, keep on some muscle mass because that, that really helps you. But uh, the only, only time I've ever seen you talk about cardiovascular fitness is when you said, uh, you kind of joked about it. You said, oh, I do a lot of fucking, that's good cardiovascular fitness. That was a bunch of video. And you absolutely like never years, recommend one, that. That was, years ago, that was years ago. And two, I, it, it, I stick by that. Fucking is the best cardio. Keep going. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but I mean, it's it's not real cardio because, uh, like, and you're not oh, doing so, it right, buddy. <laughs> so you, you don't think that uh, getting a good, uh, constant, steady state cardio workout is uh, absolutely the best because you seem to be like for health. You are mm -hmm. um, completely about health, and and so you, you stopped doing the heavy, heavy lifting because you wanted to do whatever whatever was good for your health to make you yeah. live a long day. And the studies say yeah. that that uh, that steady state long uh, and that's kind of goes back to our ancestral and, and that's kind of like liver King, uh, you know, a clock, a broke clock, a clock is, is uh, right at least twice a day. Well, he was right about keeping moving. So. And I talk about that all the time, actually. It's well, weird. Yeah, it's, like, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like you heard the shit that you wanted to argue. No, with. no, Cause you never say no, anything I mean, about cardiovascular fitness at all. You never say, you say, Oh, put some muscle on, get your body weight down all these days, but you never say go out and get some good cardiovascular, uh, activity you say i get activity to uh to, you know to get your weight down if you're overweight but you never you never talk about cardiovascular fitness at all at all but you can go, oh, you yeah. can go see my, <laughs> yeah, go to my channel i'm my dude, channel I, 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 I why would the fuck would i ever watch you i mean like oh, no offense but why the fuck there, would i ever videos. watch you well it, because it's videos that are critical of you and you you always want to face face people who are critical and of you and, 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 and you're here right now but why the fuck would i watch your videos bro like, no, I mean, I, I have no idea you even fucking existed. I, I think I remember seeing you comment a couple of times, but besides that, yeah, I you got me you actually got me blocked you know, because I was on there trying to trying to explain and you you've actually got me blocked on your live chat. OK, because I was trying to, trying to ex explain that situation there. You, know, you, you were we're trying trying your all, you were we trying to give your opinion. You were trying to give your opinion. You were trying to give here. You're going to let me talk for a minute. You're trying to give your very, very, very short opinion because I talk about cardiovascular fitness literally almost daily on these lives. So. I feel for you, bro. I mean, I, I, I like when the, I like cultivating the trolls, especially when people make videos on me. That is absolutely fucking awesome. But dude, I, I, I just, I have no idea like why, like I have, I would have no idea why you would think I don't talk about cardiovascular fitness when I tell people to get consistent daily activity and all the fucking time. It's something I say literally every fucking yeah, day. Act activity, I mean, like, activity, you say activity. Yeah. Yeah, you don't absolutely. say uh, getting your heart rate up to a good cardio type of workout. Because in in fact, the people that I talk to normally have to lose weight, and getting their heart rate up is not necessarily what they need. They need to be in the habit of getting cardiovascular work in. I talk about all the time about how my literally my workouts are literally super super fucking uh, intense and consistent with very minimal very minimal rest. And there's a fucking treadmill right here. I mean, literally, like. You, you you just you do realize how dumb you look right now like i mean i i i it's kind of i i understand the whole youtube thing bro i i, I get that i i understand that like you want to play the game make videos about people and please do keep making them i couldn't give a fuck less but when you're going to say i never talk about something when literally the whole comment section said i talk about all the fucking time maybe Maybe, maybe, maybe you're just looking at it from a biased perspective because for some reason you dislike me. And that's totally good, too, because that way you're here. But no, no, I like y'all. I really like y'all. And uh, uh, I know, I'm so old, but like you're me, a, you're like, a good like, guy. Like me, dislike me, we're all good. Okay, yeah. because 
you, but you, it literally I mean, does not matter to me. Yeah, you were but, saying but that day how you do your workouts with a little, with a, uh, less rest uh, times between, so that helps your cardiovascular fitness. Yeah, I, I kind of give yeah. you a thumbs up for that. So but, in other, so in other, so in other words, you did hear me talk about it, but then a little earlier you said I never talk about yeah, it. Yeah, that's you what you stupid, rarely, you rarely talk about. You see how yeah, no, you, you said never. You see how stupid you look now, right? No, 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 I, no not yeah, never. Yeah. No, very, very rarely. But I, I disagree with because you're doing your arm work. Very few, very few workouts that you can do rest betweens, like maybe squats and deadlifts, and some calisthenic yeah, type you, of exercises. You, very few workouts you can do. I mean, you, it's, you I, also, like, go ahead. Go you, ahead. you said in an earlier video that you do a lot of uh, uh, time under tension, and it's like arm workouts and stuff like that to keep your arms big. Uh, but you do less time between those sets. No, those they're not going to get you uh, to a cardiovascular level. You need okay. need to have like more than an hour of cardiovascular, your heart rate up. I think you should be doing like some uh, the three cardio uh, things that uh, are very very good for you are cycling, swimming, and uh, and so and running. And uh, I know you're a big big uh, against running, but if you can run on soft surfaces with soft shoes, you can do some very very brisk walking so, up hills like that. So I, I I appreciate the advice of somebody that. I would like, I, I lost weight to not look like, so I, I just yeah, want to let yeah. you know, have, have a great day, you know, mm. but you, please feel free to keep talking, but I got to be real. I just, just want to recommend to you. Yeah, please. Uh, try, try I'm, I'm going to rec I'm gonna recommend to you. I want to recommend to you that you lose about 60 pounds and then come back. Well, I'm, I'm six foot two twenty, and a bit much, you know, my face I'm, actually is very, very fat. I'm uh, sure. My yeah. body is, yeah, I can stand to lose weight. You know, we can all, we're all yeah. working on ourselves, Alan. I can stand to lose yeah, weight. Abso ab absolutely. And I'll take, and I'll, can, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll listen more, probably... I'll listen more, I'll listen more openly to your advice when you have in fact lost some weight. Let's, let's say that. I, I hope this inspires well, go you. go to my Lu menu and see how I'm Lu more cardiovascular fit than you are. Dude, I can, I can, <laughs> I can, I can guarantee you this. I'm never watching one of your videos. I ever. I, I, ever. I, that would embarrass but, me. You'd you, you, you kind of see, you self-reflect. Now, a guy 15 years older than you can make up a flight of stairs at the same weight that almost made you pass out because he's very, very, in, he's a cyclist when, and he's very the, 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 tuned in. The, 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 the same, the same the weight when I was 280 pounds. Do. It's like you, it's like, huh? bro, it's like, you, it, it's like you don't understand biology. I weighed that. The weight was on me. Like I, I had a huge visceral deposit of fat. That was what was like, that is the problem. It's not the weight on the back. It's like you don't understand the basic concepts. And clearly you don't because you got a good 50 pounds to fucking lose. And while cycling and shit like that, you must eat like shit, bro. It's the fucking food. Yeah, I'm work, it's the working fucking on it, food. Yeah. Yeah. So keep I'm working wrong with me and you have right keep, wrong with keep, you. Keep working. Yeah, but we're not, yeah, but we're not the same because I couldn't give a fuck about less about you and you seem to be obsessed with me. That's why we're not no, the no. same. So I, you have I a good day. My... All right. What's up? I can't hear you. Give me one second. I'll put your mic on. Can anyone there hear me? Are. I can hear you. There now. we go. I can be heard. Awesome. Um, I just wanted to come on here to go on a rant about the whole racist thing. Mm -hmm. um, why am I hearing? Sorry, give me one second. I'm hearing double feedback. There we go. Um, so... If anyone knows me in the community, I'm brown as fuck. Uh, I'm Indian. It's it's you can see. I hate it when people say it's it's racist to take care of yourself, and people of a certain race are uh, less likely to lose weight. Because here's the thing: um, Indian people or people from that subcontinent, we are we generally have higher levels of heart related issues, diabetes, and all that bullshit that comes with our very very fat and carb and sugar rich diet so getting your people getting your family getting your demographic to get healthy is not racist how is it fucked up in the head can you be to think that's racist to want your race to live a little longer it's um, crazy. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm, it boggles my mind. It frustrates me. It just, it's like, I'm trying to get you to live a little healthier here. I want yeah. you, I want you to be on this planet for a little longer. I, I want you to be here. I might not like you, but I still want you to be here. So the fact that you're saying, uh, people go, oh, it's white supremacist, this and blah, blah, blah. And it's racist to expect people to lose weight. Uh, no, it's not. 
it's no, not. it's not. It's not. It's yeah. Oh, sometimes going to a gym is a privilege, but working out is not a privilege. You right. can work out without a gym. You, you can, can work, work out without. anywhere. Anywhere. My. Uh, let me give you an example. My father is right now. He's given up on his on his gym equipment. He used to have a lot of gym equipment and blah blah blah. He's given up on that. Because he realized he could work out with cinder blocks, gas tanks, cars. Hell, he, instead of a sled, he's pushing a car. That's what he's been doing because it's working better for him. It's challenging his body better. And it's like, you, like I said, you don't need a gym. It's not white yeah. supremacist. It's not racist anything. Just get fucking healthy. I'm yeah, sorry. Exactly. I'm a little fired up today. It's well, that's awesome. awesome. I, I, I'm, very familiar with, I'm very familiar with the concept of getting, being fired up. Give me one second here. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can get off if someone else wants to come in. No, no. I just wanted to pop off on that. You can actually you can actually stay. We'll just let other people on. And yes, this by the way, this is uh, people are asking Hi. if you are mod. <laughs> so yes, yes. Hi, it. I'm the mod. I'm the one that 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 uh, YouTube does not like. <laughs> yeah, no shit. So hang on a second, Vlad. We're gonna let you on right now. How you doing, man? Hey, what's up? How you doing? Uh, Hey, what's up, everyone? Hi. What can I uh, What can I do for you, man? Uh, well, I mean, uh, is that old thing, man? That that old that old fat phobic is racist thing, man. That grinds my gears. Yeah, dude. It, it's it's so hard to like for me, for me to deal with because like. I've got friends of all like shit. I, I'm, I'm a super racist. Like, <laughs> I, the fuck. Uh, I mean, I find that like when Jillian, do you remember when I got like it was like four years ago that they started started doing that with the the fat acceptance people where they were. They were oh yeah, them? I remember that. I remember yeah. it really well. And apparently, everyone who was remotely supporting you was racist too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it was it, it was so ridiculous, and I just. I don't, I've never understood the, the connotation to it. What I can tell you is that like, I really think that it's, it was in, initially started because it's hard for fat acceptance people to be able to say like, Hey, you know, leave me alone. I just want to be fat. Right. Because then they're admitting to ill health. What they need to do is they have to have like a quieting switch. Like there were, well, you're just racist. Like what the fuck? You know, like one thing, I know, one, one thing I noticed also is the eagerness to remove all form of agency from themselves. That's a big part of it too. That's a big part of that, it. I, I don't understand. I, I don't understand. How can you like, like you live in a body? No, you don't live in a body. It's you. Mm -hmm. I, I, I agree. Uh, that, I, that, that, just, I don't, I don't, I don't understand. I mean, I had people in my family die young. Mm -hmm. That's I, I I've I, I've had uh, we recently had a family member uh, pass away from obesity and I know it sounds weird because of what I do but what I do is not necessarily super popular with everybody including members of my family right and it's just kind of um to me it's this it's, it's this hard thing for people to understand where you know I'm not even like my my point is not even. If, if you're 20 or 30 pounds overweight, work on that shit. It's still very unhealthy for you. But we are literally at a stage right now where people want nobody to mention the fact that they are hundreds of pounds overweight. Like I was 30 pounds. pounds overweight and I felt like total shit. Yeah. Well, the problem, and here's another, th <laughs> here's another thing people, that people don't seem to realize. Uh, we got all sorts of people fucking popping on. God damn. So <laughs> hang on, we'll, we'll, we'll allow everybody to talk here in just a second. Okay. But uh, you have to have your camera on, but one second. But um, the, the reality of it is like, uh, people that have been bigger forever can lose 30 pounds and it not feel like that much of a change. They feel a little better automatically, but they don't realize it. people like, if you are at a smaller weight and you gain 30 pounds, you notice that shit. Like it's fresh, yeah. especially too. Like you notice it. Right. So when, then when you lose the weight, it, it's much different. So I tell you what, I'm gonna let a few other people on here, Alex, I'm gonna let everybody else on before I let you on because you were already on, but. Uh, I'll definitely lay it back on Sheeny Beanie. It's very good to put a name to a face, and then I'm also going to put my <laughs> oh name on Sean. How are you? How you do, how, how's everybody doing? And, What's and, going and, on, man? So I'll just let everybody on all at once. Give me one second here, because I want to do one it's thing. A party right. out here. I'm just going to take the screensaver off. That way, everybody can see it. So I'm just going to go around who who joined first. Everybody can stay if you want to, or you can hop off. I don't give a shit. 
uh, so we're just going to go with uh, Sheeny. It is you've been you've been commenting for a long fucking time, and it's very good to meet you. Yeah, I, and, I forget uh, when I like first started watching you. I, yeah. I think I saw like a video with you and and uh, Ilana, and I was like, oh, nice. So I just started yeah. watching from there. But that Mike guy, he really he really had me messed up. I'm like, bro, you really sick. Because my dad cycles. I'm like, honey, boo-boo, you do not cycle. Like, you don't, except for cycling that food from your plate to your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> now, now he, he, here's, the, here's the thing. He, he may. I, I, like, I don't think, like, and just this is just like because I've had years of dealing with this shit. People that normally come on and say, I can do this, normally can't. Uh, okay. it's like the, it's if they point out the one thing that they do, they normally can do that, but they place everything else around it. And I was guilty of this for many years. Like I thought squatting was the fucking holy grail of lifting. And if you didn't squat big, you did blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, not like once you actually like come out of the fitness haze, you know, and again, like, and, and Mike, I'm sure you're still watching, uh, but no offense, bro. Like, so like, keep making your videos because any advertisement is good advertisement. I'm not going to watch a fuck one of them, but like, I really do suggest that you lose about 50 pounds. And if you lose 50 pounds, let me know how you did it. You can come on back on and we'll talk about it. So I was but, almost under my desk when that Mike Duke killed me. That's awesome. I, 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 enjoy, I enjoyed every second of it. I've, I've missed, I, uh, that used to happen to me on Instagram all the time where I would bring the trolls on and they don't, they won't do it no more. I refuse to believe he actually does cardio. Like, I'm sorry, you cannot be that weight and then push yeah, you for. That, you you have can't to eat a lot of food. I, I can believe no, it. You exactly, can. you got to eat a lot of food. It. A whole lot yeah, of food. Look, I, I can. I can. I put that twice in the comment. I'm like, really? You want? We did it with all that weight on your back. Okay, try carrying the weight all no. day and then do it. I'm gonna tell Sean, you why. <laughs> I can believe it. I'm gonna tell you why because I know. Personally, people who do a lot of cardio, like they can run miles seriously, but they their diets are crazy, you know, because yeah. they have this belief that, you know, because I work out or because I run, then I can eat whatever I want. And that seems yeah. to be this belief in the fitness community overall that, oh, because I work out, I can eat whatever I want. Yep. And they don't realize that it just doesn't work like that. Nope. It just absolutely does not. Um, I'm guilt. I'm guilty of that, and I'm having a hard time with it. I you always. I think um, ah. personally, I think that point of view is promoted. You know, um, I agree. You know, by some I, honestly, I think that point of view is promoted because some people, you know, it's how can I put this? You can't be out here solving problems, you know. Otherwise, you might lose your clientele or so. so that, <laughs> for some, that's people. part of it. I do, I do think to a great degree, a lot of the fitness world wants to try to find their own, like they want to find their thing that they can, they can push. It almost always comes with somebody, uh, you know, pushing a certain like uh, mode of mode of whatever. It's the same thing like keto. I know people that only eat keto and they fat because they eat a lot of calories, you know? And that's why like the dude, dude, uh, what do you call himself? The something, prof I don't know, something, the fit philosopher or something. I'm sure he. I, I bet you. I bet you he does work out. I bet you he, in in some way, thinks he works out, um, really, really, really hard. And I bet you he does do a lot of biking and cardio. Um, but it's obvious, like the the uh, the obvious is, is that like it's the overeating. Like I mean, we, somebody just brought up April Lauren. That's exactly it too. We have video of her. There's more video of that woman working out online than there is of me. I mean, mm -hmm. working out because I. That's to me, it's a personal thing, right? But I, I agree with Sean. Like, I mean, I, I think that to a certain degree, it's promoted that way. Like people, like no trainer wants to be like, hey, you got to watch what you eat. Like that people don't do, like people uh, don't like, they don't want necessarily to have to tell people that I, because they're very worried about, like, this is going to branch off into something, but like, look at 2020. 2020 was a year where almost every fitness influencer should have stopped and said, hey, now is the time to lose weight no matter what. Like, don't focus on your fucking biceps. Don't focus on your fucking deadlift. Don't focus on anything like that. We like, especially at the beginning when we didn't have as much information, we knew from the very beginning it was about fat people and old people, right? To not encourage weight loss is one of the reasons how I knew that public health doesn't want you fucking healthy. But all this, at the same time, I was very disappointed in a huge portion of the fitness community in that it should have been our focus, like as, as a whole, like we should have been able to come together as, you know, fitness professionals, even doctors, everything like phys uh, physical therapists, everything. The one clear factor was people should have lost some fucking weight. And instead, all the actions we did in the last couple of years, not only intensified the fattening of America, 
but it even more intensified the fattening of children and minorities in America, uh, it, it, like even to a greater degree. So what I think, like, I think you're right because part of it is they didn't want to lose their popularity. They just wanted to like be like, like they wanted to be in the groove. They wanted to stay in their algorithm. Nobody wanted to take the chance. You know, I unfortunately, my ADHD does not let me do shit like that. I'm going to speak my fucking mind. But another big portion of it is they didn't want to get canceled, but also most of them don't want to tell people like you can't eat that. You know what I mean? Like it, it's, it's become this new trend. I mean, mm. the fucked up thing is off to a whole other ADHD point, but I used to like when I made the, the, the V shreds videos, like part of what he said, like uh, people, people love those, but I stopped making them. Right. Because like, what else am I going to say? He's stupid and fucking moronic. Right. I mean, super fucking pretty guy. That fuck, like what, what else am I going to say? Right. But all these bitches are V shred. Like all, like he's, he's one of the first ones like, Hey, you can drink a soda and eat pizza and eat a Kit Kat and be, still be thin. I see that all the fucking time from almost every fucking body, you know, like almost every fitness influencer does that shit nowadays. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm a big portion of, of I, I do a big portion of you should occasionally have a meal just for pleasure, but to tell people that it's okay to just to keep eating pizza and it's okay to keep eating burgers, your V shreds just you, like all these people like joined me in making fun of this motherfucker and then they turned into his ass. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's what I find funny. Like a huge portion of the fitness community, especially the YouTube fitness community. They laughed when I made fun of him. They fucking joined in and made videos. All of them, all of them made videos about him too. And then most of them fucking became him. You know what I mean? Like most, you know most of them. You? Yeah. They sell outs. You know what that tells you? That mm -hmm. tells you that most of them wanted to be him from the get go. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's just that speaking out against him became the popular thing to do. So they rode yep. that wave. But then oh, when yeah. he was out of the way somewhat, they did mm -hmm. what they wanted to do anyways. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, because all of them saw like he was making fucking money. Like, I mean, that's, I mean, you can, that's an undeniable thing. It's like $100 million a year that fucking V-Shreds company makes. They, they fucking paid. Uh, oh, yeah, they're paid as fuck. I mean, that's how, that's how they can afford all the, the, for every other ad for fitness on fucking youtube to be v shreds ads you know but it's like a lot of them and i mean a lot of fucking people like they fucking bitched about him they made videos about him and then all of a sudden they're all fucking doing the same goddamn thing as him all of them all of them um so sean what did you want to say initially okay i got a couple of things man like first the whole racism part all right let me uh okay <laughs> all right man all right so Personally, I feel like um, when it comes to a lot of things in our society with the social engineering that we're constantly under, mm -hmm. when they say that something is racist, what that really means is that's their way of trying to take that thing away from you or trying to deter you from doing said thing when they deem it as racist. Mm -hmm. Now, if you can read between the lines on this one, this is something that I've heard referred to by many people who are conservative <laughs> as being um they call it racism by low expectations. Because if you notice, when they say these things about, you know, black and, you know, just, just, just non-white people or whatever, when they say that, oh, well, to expect them to do X, Y, Z, oh, that's racist. You know, now to me, like I say, that's considered racism by low expectations. Like, so you think that we can't do X, Y, and Z. So what are you saying about us? Mm -hmm. You know? And then that's secondly... Absolutely. And then, you know, the second point I was going to say is that to even debunk that. Now, like the guy Vlad was saying, he mentioned that his family, you know, he come from a uh, family, has a background of health issues and so forth. Same with me, you know, and most of it was ra um, weight related to the point where we're talking about people like barely, barely reaching 50, you mm -hmm. know, checking out, you know, yep. and because... When I was growing up, I mean, I rarely ever saw someone in my family who was um, over 60. Rarely. You know, wow. To the point where, now back to me, I'm like I'm like 5'7 in height. And at one mm -hmm. point in my life, I had gotten as high as to nearly 300 pounds. Cool. And now, I took it off. I had got down to like 140, you know. Wow. But, yeah. But, you know, my, but see, my problem is, but when I when I got there, my problem is that I kind of I would um kind of yo-yo back and forth, you mm -hmm. know. So, and by the way, for those free game for those listening, the hardest part of losing weight is keeping it off, you mm -hmm. know, because you might somehow be under the delusion that once you get there, then, you know, you're gonna automatically stay there. But 
No, that's when the real work begins. But I digress. So, yeah, I've been on this thing, man, where I might gain a little bit back, take it off, gain it back, take it off. But anyway, but the reason why I bring that up is to say that if you follow the rules, and the rules are really simple, not easy, but simple, mm-hmm. anyone can do it. I mean, it's just simple math and just, you know, some self-discipline, you know? Yep. Um, it's not going to be easy. It's going to require sacrifice. And you mentioned earlier how the guy v would say something like, you can eat pizza and drink whatever and lose weight. That may be true if that's all you eat in that one day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, because, <laughs> you know, at one point I was doing something like that where I might eat some chips or something I had no business really fooling with like that. Mm-hmm. But it might be almost all I ate that day, you know, which I don't need to tell you necessarily is like, man, that that's no way to live. No, but anyway, absolutely not. So the point is, it can be done because I would say 90 yeah. percent of my weight loss was me just cleaning up my diet, you know, um, getting my calories right. Um, yeah. But now I'm like really heavy into calisthenics now. So it's awesome. I love calisthenics, too. <laughs> I, bi- biometrics and calisthenics are my fucking Jimmy. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah. So now, the thing so is, the thing, I, f- is the thing I find oh, sorry, funny. Sorry. Go, no, you go ahead. You go ahead. I interrupted you. Uh, uh, no, I was just going to make the, the final point that it can be done by anybody, you know, if you're because the information to do it is out there. Now you got people who like to complicate it, like 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 for example, you know, some people will have you believe that you got to go ke- uh, keto, you got to go paleo, you got to go. Ve- None of that stuff is required. No. None of that stuff is required to lose weight, you know, to no. get your health right. Because the problem, I believe, from my own studies, is that we consume way too much processed food in our society. Yep. Very little whole is. foods. Yep. Yeah. That's what it is. So the thing of the, the, the biggest thing for keto and carnivore and all this shit, people should find the way that they can eat whole foods the most that satiate them the most. And that is honestly different for every person. That's one of the things we talk about in our coaching. It's different for every human being. Like I personally, like if I even eat sweet potato in the morning, just that kind of sweet, I'm fucking hungry all day. The taste of sweet. Like I can fucking sit here and think about sweet shit and get hungry. You know what I mean? And I'm on all of my supplements. I don't get physical hunger. I just fucking don't. But I love sweet shit so much that my brain will be like, hey, that's a good idea. Let's fucking get some of that shit. You know what I mean? Like, and that's what causes me, causes me to be hungry sometimes. You know what I mean? Like, so I, I, I completely agree with you. The processed carbohydrates are it. One of the things I wanted to say since I've got a, like a nice eclectic group up here, how damaging is it to like brown and black community that they're actually trying to state that like it's racist to be like, to, to tell people to lose weight? Like to me, that's damaging to a community that especially has seen a higher growth in obesity rates. It's extremely, it's like, it's almost, that of itself is almost hateful of the black and brown community to me. Like, I mean, to openly just fucking lie and placate to the point where it's like, no, you're fine fat. You're, it's every, everybody doesn't want people to lose weight because of black women. That's horrible to do to black women. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just, it's, it, it sets people up for such failure. It sets children up. To, it sets children up to uh, to live without their mothers or fathers, uh, like a, as adults. Like, pe- like I couldn't imagine. Like my my son's twenty some years. Like or he's going to be twenty three soon, right? Like I can't imagine not seeing what it's like when he's fifty. You know what I mean? I, so for that, I'm going to have to fucking you know be close to eighty at the very fucking least. You know, I can't imagine not seeing how his life turns out. Shit like that. Like uh, it, uh, that's whenever I talk about him, it chokes me up a little bit. But I just can't imagine that. And what, that's what we're doing to bl- the black and brown community is we are encouraging shortened lifespan and increased chronic disease. You know, like when you're already pre- like as a, you know, as a black male for Vlad and for Sean, when you guys are already predisposed to hypertension, having extra weight on you is fucking dangerous. It is. I would argue it is almost more dangerous for people of uh, of African descent to have uh, extra weight on them due to the increased prevalence of hypertension, type two diabetes and stuff like that, just by genetics, you know, or anybody with that in their family history, like American Indians, holy fuck, it is so incredibly bad for American Indians to have extra weight on them. But yet, if you've ever been to a reservation, it is shit food. It is alcohol and shit food. That's it. It is like the biggest grocery store is a fucking 7-Eleven and they serve whiskey right out of that motherfucker. Like, I mean, it's like, to me, the system and the system we have set up, especially where our system is mostly predominantly ultra processed carbohydrate driven, that that system does in fact more like it is more predominantly harder on 
uh, minorities and uh, and people that that are necessarily more at risk by 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 these types of things genetically. You know what I mean? Like I'm fucking I'm white I'm white Italian. I'm basically German Italian and American Indian. You know, like. It like fucking terrified me to f- fucking think about be- being obese. It should not be something that is is like said to be okay for anybody. Because I know that the people, I, the the way distant relatives I have that are American Indian, they did not live long, you know. And it was all because they ate themselves and drank themselves to death. All of them, every single fucking one of them, you know. Crazy. Now, uh, Alex, I wanted to get to Kashina real quick and see what she has to say, and then I'll come back to you, Alex. Okay. Um, hi Alan. Uh hi everyone. As a as a biracial woman, like I feel like this is such BS that they spew that like, you know, if you're if you're doing certain things to be healthy, then you're racist. It's like, why can't everyone just be healthy? Like what I don't understand the push for so much like rhetoric of like, hey, it's okay to be fat, it's okay to be this. It's like why do you want to be like a sloth? Honestly, like I, I just, I don't understand. I've, it, it frustrates me so much and I get so hype about this because it's like not all people who want to be healthy are racist, obviously. There, I mean, there's right. racist people it's, everywhere. Of, of everywhere, course, it's everywhere. so insane. Right. But it's just like, it's, it's like, why is that the one go to, oh, you, if you, if you do this, you're, you're, you're racist. Or if you do this, you're, you're fat phobic. Or if you do this, you're, whatever ob is whatever like i just like i said being biracial that shit frustrates me so much and mm. i i <laughs> i can't even express my words right now i'm frustrated about it well the reality of it is it's just it that is actually like i like i always put it out every single time to believe that you would you would have to believe that like several things are true like to say being you know like if i if, if i were to say you should lose weight and for that mean i'm racist you would have to a believe that all black people are fat or ca- or cannot help being fat like any any black person that's fat can't help being fat it is so like inherently racist it's almost like the if like it's it's almost like the you know id thing like how how voter ID, voter id is racist so you're yeah. saying fucking black people can't get ids are you fucking kidding me how do these people don't realize how racist that shit sounds now don't get me wrong there's racists on every side of every political aisle. I've, you know, unfortunately I've met some of them. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, and I, I don't, I don't hang with that shit. I don't, I don't, I don't allow that, that type of ignorance to be in my life at all. But when people say stuff that ridiculous, it is only for, like, it is the abuse of people for politics. I have, I have like, again, like I'm the white business partner out of all of my, out of all my business partners. They all got IDs. All their kids got IDs. All the people they know got IDs. Like it's such a fucking stupid thing to say, but it parlays over into the belief that all black people or brown people are inherently fat and or lazy and or this, like, cause that's the thing. People that actually, people that actually know about weight loss, people that have like really, that, that understand it, like people like uh, Sean's obviously lost weight, Vlad knows, like uh, everybody here has paid attention to it, right? People that actually know about weight loss knows that there's some inherentness where you've got a bad relationship with food. So now you're insisting that because you're, because you're a certain color, you automatically have a bad relationship with food. And we all know that there's under movement. Like even you won't, you don't even need to call it lazy, but there's definitely under movement for the caloric intake you're taking. So that means that we th- that these people think that all black people or most black people don't move either. It's so like the inherent like voicing of stereotypes by that just simple statement that's on Time Magazine. It's on Time Magazine. That's the fucked up crazy shit. Like society, we live in such a clown world that Time Magazine and American Science are racist. It's so hey, fucking crazy. Yeah. Now, to I guess to um add a silver lining to it all. Now, outside of a few idiots on the internet mm-hmm. and, you know, the um, liberal college types or whatever, I've never heard anyone in real life actually say this, though. Yeah, ever. <laughs> ever. Me neither. Yeah. Me neither. Yeah, it's, uh, it's always yeah. that same chick with the camera. It's written in racism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so, definitely. I mean, so like, I, being... Being like in because I mean, I'm 24, right? So I was in college, I've been in school like my 
all my entire life pretty much yeah. so like I've obviously been surrounded by people who have this viewpoint like oh you're black therefore and I'm like thank you for like seeing me as my skin color versus as like an individual like I'm a person <laughs> like, and it's like yeah. it's so funny because people bring things up to me like oh because you're a woman you can do this or like you're black so you can do this and I'm like I just I just want to help people I don't care about the color of your skin like and I look at them and I'm like you're Gen X or like you're you're a baby boomer you know you were not raised like that like stop doing this to me you know so it's it's craziness that, I mean I, I agree with you though like very rarely in real life do I do I do I ever meet these people ever like ever Mark and I Mark and I I have a theory that like social media is obviously so Kate so you know cultivated it's not really real life like I don't see like like it's like I live in Florida and people are like oh my god like they truly believe that Florida is like this racist bigoted fucking crazy ass area right Meanwhile, right down the street from me, there's a country line dance bar and connected to it is a drag queen bingo place. You know what I mean? Like, it's absolutely that people pay no attention to like two dudes holding a hand, one wearing a cowboy hat, cowboy boots, big belt buckle and, and, and jeans and another guy walking in like a, a dress. People think nothing of it. And I and I encourage that they shouldn't. You know why? Because it don't fucking affect you. You know, like it, it actually, like it, that's, that's my thing. Like do, is, is, the, is the tutu something I think would look good on me? Probably not. <laughs> but at the same time, like, I don't, it doesn't bother me that old dudes, you know, maybe he should shave his legs, but old dude wearing it doesn't bother me. Right. So like, I, it's this weird thing because what we see from these people on social media, I mean, it's, it's a huge portion of the, the fat acceptance community. These people don't engage anywhere besides their TikTok or their Instagram yeah, that's or stuff true. like that too. You know, like that's, like, that's a huge as portion soon, of that as shit. As you know? soon as you comment, you get blocked. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, Alex, we're back to you. What do you got to say? Um, so, a couple of quick things. The first was um, about, like, the whole, um, uh, I think it was Vlad or Sean that was saying something about the, uh, like, exercising um, and how it's so overly emphasized in, like, fitness and weight loss circles. And the problem with that is, you know, like, it takes a lot to burn even a couple hundred calories like in a gym and you can very quickly and easily eat yourself out of that caloric deficit if you're not careful and you know people need to be focused more on their diet i mean i'm not saying exercise is unimportant it's important to exercise but exercise is not the only way to weight loss and people don't necessarily realize that which is a problem um the other thing is that um a lot of these people on the internet, um, especially like facts of this TikTok, will say things like, oh, um, the way that you eat has nothing to do with your um, body weight and, you know, like you can put on body mass without eating anything. And I'm just thinking, I would, I mean, I don't know if you guys know how many like pets I have. I have like 30 some odd frogs and a bunch of geckos. And like, I would save so much money if it were true that any living organism could go without eating and still put on biomass because I wouldn't have to buy the food that my animals require on a monthly basis, spending hundreds of dollars on it. If it were the case that eating didn't actually do anything for how much you weigh. And so it's like, you know, and these are, you know, a lot of these people accept that like if your dog is obese, it's unhealthy and animals like dogs and cats and everything aren't so distinct from humans physiologically that it's, you know, it's not like anytime you use any kind of drug or, you know, cosmetic shampoo or anything, it's been tested on animals with the presupposition that the animal that you're testing this product on, is physiologically similar enough to humans where results from that particular experiments can be applied to humans so i don't see why when it comes to something being overweight or obese being unhealthy for a dog cat, a rodent or anything it's all of a sudden healthy for humans like we're physically physiologically close enough to some of these other organisms where things that make us them sick also make us sick mm -hmm. like I, I mean it's well it's the same thing like people like seem to fully admit like having fat children is bad like like it's like it's, it's this weird thing how they know this but being fat as an adult is not bad for you i mean it's the you know it's it's the denial portion of it that that always ends up hurting people and i i'm here real quick guys i do have to like i got shit i gotta get done like we just flew back so i i i actually gotta go grocery shopping otherwise there's no food uh but uh 
anybody else have anything real quick they'd like to add? And it was a pleasure having all of you guys. I'm thinking this will be the Friday thing we do. Like, like every Friday, I think I'm going to just have a bunch of people on. We can have a group discussion about basically, and I, and, and I want to want, want the discussion to be more about like the societal issues based around uh, health and weight loss and stuff like that, because I think it's important to start normalizing uh, this type of stuff. I thought this conversation was amazing. All of you that joined, thank you absolutely so much. Even uh, the crazy dude, thank you, dude, for joining. I, I appreciate I appreciate you offering yourself up to be humiliated. Um, Real but quick. yeah, Sean, um, go. oh okay, uh, go go ahead, Sean. I'll go after you. For... What's her name? Sheeny. Have a question for her. Now, yeah. you being a, you being a student and all, how would you feel if the administrators in your school came to you and said, "Hey, um, because you're black, um, we require you know A's. We require A's to pass this class for everyone else. But because you're black now, because you're black, we only require a C from you. How would yes, you feel so about I, that? I, I would be livid." And like it, it's absolutely ridiculous. And like to 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 add to this, like I'm not just like like I've done my undergrad, so I'm actually a graduate student. So like I've done the same things as everybody else to get into the school, and I would be absolutely just. I think I'd be angered and also irritated if like they told me, oh well, you got in because of, you know, the color of your skin. We're trying to meet some quota. It's like no, you should let me in because I'm talented and you see, you know, potential in me. Don't bring me in because of you're trying to, you know, look a certain way okay. to the world. You know, like it's it's it would it would be, and they do this sometimes, and it's it's crazy, um, and they shouldn't, right? Because there's like a study where it's like they had people go to MIT, and it's like they would have been very successful at a normal school, normal state school, but because they went to MIT, which is crazy, like they're they you know, extremely hard school, they ended up not being successful there. And it's like, no, like, that's, that's the problem. Like, that's an issue versus yeah. like, if you brought someone to a school where they would be successful, then you end up better. Like the school I went to for undergrad, it's not some highfalutin school, right? It's just the state school. I did great there. I got like a 3.8 GPA. I studied STEM. Good I ended you. up going and working for like, a, for a bank on wall street like i worked extremely hard and like it's because that was in my realm of what i could do and i excelled there and there's nothing wrong with that like no. i don't need to go to like a princeton and like get a 2.5 gpa and end up working as like i don't know like in consulting or something which there's nothing right. wrong with consulting it's just not what i want to do right so yeah awesome hey, alan and you're yeah. absolutely right about people's perception of the south now i'm in new orleans you know and mm -hmm. people <laughs> I get people from out west, people from up north, and they come down here. They think that once you ride down the street, you're gonna see Klansmen and you know big monster <laughs> trucks. With, that's, that's what you know. This is what they think. But they come down here and like, no, I never, I never, I never quite seen any of that. Like, you know. So, so yeah, I just made that point to say that yeah, man, people they get they they get these perceptions from Hollywood and you yeah. know people on the internet who live vicariously through Hollywood and they get these perceptions having never lived or experienced these things themselves, you know, and it's the same with that as in everything else. I, I, w I would never not. I, I, the South is where I'm staying. I, I grew up in Pittsburgh oh, yes, and, then lived in South, and then, li then lived in uh, South Carolina for a while, moved back up North again and said, fuck that. Uh, I, I fucking uh, Florida is my Florida is my Jimmy Jam. Like, I, like, it, like it, we we could break off into our own goddamn country, and I'd be totally fine with it. I, I really would. Like, I, I I love it down here. And one of the things I love about the South, what I don't th think people don't understand, is literally the diversity. Like, and I will say this: here's the difference between there's racists everywhere. Because, and like I said, I I'm old. I'm fifty some years old, so I remember like racism. You know, like when it's like. We're not serving you because you're black racism. And we're not serving you because you're friends with this black guy. That's racism to me, right? And so I remember that shit. But down here, at least, like, if you do run across racist people, you know it because they say it. Like, they, they, they use the fucking words, and I prefer that. That way I know to avoid them. Political correctness is robbing us of the tr people's truths. Political correctness is forcing people to lie openly to people's faces for the sake of politeness. It does not change thought. And if anything... Those thoughts fester and manifest and grow even more in a person when they don't feel free to speak them. 
I don't, here's my thing. You can be as stupid as you fucking want in life. Be racist, be fucking misogynistic, be those fucking things, all the fuck you want. It does not affect me. I would much rather know if you are by your words and your actions than you fucking pretend not to be. And then me depend upon you not being. And then in the point of time when we actually need everybody to, that's not racist or not whatever to stand up and be one united voice, you all of a sudden sit and falter. Because I see that a lot too. A lot of people that talk about racism and a lot of people that talk about uh, the need for acceptance and bullshit, when it comes time to actually accept people, they fucking won't. I've got a lot of friends who have been called coons and Uncle Toms and all sorts of shit in the last couple of years. Oh, where it's like, do you, motherfucker, do you motherfuckers realize how racist that is? Like, you have a fucking racist slur for this person based off of their fucking beliefs and color. Like, I mean, like, we I even have called, a brown I, version of it too. Yeah, I, I, I've never gotten called an Uncle Tom. I feel fucking, I feel discriminated against. What the fuck? They say the I'm same shit what that I say. I've been called a I'm gonna tell you what that means. I got to jump all break from my. I'm, I'm going to yeah. tell you what that means when they say diversity. Diversity yeah. means only in appearance, but yep. you are not allowed to be diverse in thought. Mm -hmm. exactly. That's what that means. exactly, exactly, exactly. Man, it was, it was great having you on, Sean. <laughs> All right, man. Likewise, Jill, likewise. Thanks for you having said, me. You, you yeah. said you needed to hop off, so I just wanted to say I wanted to say bye. And please do. We're, I'm going to have people on next week. I think I'm going to do this every Friday. I've had such a good time. Please do join us again, man. Oh, yeah, and, indeed. I'll be back. <laughs> all right, man. I like it. Jillian. Um, I just wanted to bring up the one thing, uh, I think I mentioned it in, in the chat, but the one thing I find quite sinister about that that article and articles like that is they're trying to tell the, uh, like people of color that they can never be healthy. They can never be fit. They can never lose weight. They can never do that, blah, blah, blah. Okay. They, they tell us this because they don't want us to pursue health mm -hmm. pursue yep. weight loss pursue anything that uh, other than what they think we are capable of to me that is sinister because it's like okay so you're trying to keep me sick you're trying to keep me oppressed you're trying to keep me unhealthy do you want me to forever be on sucking on the government's tit do you forever want me to be at your mercy and then give me crumbs so i can vote for you that's that's right. that's ridiculous and that is sinister in my opinion uh yeah that's all that's what i remember and now again i can feel myself getting heated up so i'm gonna <laughs> shut up now <laughs> yeah to, to, to follow up on what uh i think what sean was saying yeah i hear you yeah okay cool yeah to follow up on what he's saying in fact me i'm a black dude right you see no. me, i'm a you see me as a black dude but i also live in canada so on top of being black, I'm also an immigrant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, so is Julian. I'm in Montreal. And uh, Man, so you're lucky. We've got Ontario. You're in training Ontario. And uh, when I talk to people on the internet, especially Americans, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not the typical black person that usually encountered they i hear about stuff about uh people tell me stuff like do you have any bt card i'm like i'm canadian we don't have that here <laughs> and and uh it, even it's with, so insulting it's just and, and uh <laughs> and, and even with other black in uh, we've even with other black people i'm like i don't go to church and Black people are like, how come you're black and you don't go to church? I'm like, because you're an individual. I think, Vlad, sure. it's because immigrants have a different mindset. We have a different uh, like drive. We have a different set of values. Like there is, I, I found uh, people my age who are immigrants have a totally different drive to anything that we want to accomplish versus people who are second gen from here it's it's i don't know maybe we stick to traditional values maybe we stick to you know hard work and don't um don't wait for someone to give you a handout you know way, you came here the, build the, your life go for it the way the way i was raised my mother would always tell me listen you're a minority you're an immigrant you have to be better than everybody else be so good that they can't ignore you Average is not good enough for you. Yep. That's uh, how I was raised. Average is not good enough for you. My mom, when she looked at my report card, she didn't look at if I passed. 
she looked at herself as above the class average. Yeah. That so, was so a wait, standard act to meet. Real real quick, Kashina, if you're there, I, you've, been, you've been waiting to come back on. I gotta wrap this, I gotta wrap this up and I want to get to everybody, everybody in a round table. Kashina, All I want to all I want to do is say thank you. Thank you, Alan, for everything, for always being on and encouraging us all. And thank you to everyone in the chat always. I I, oh, I, just, I really That's appreciate awesome. it. I, I make I make I make it my best effort to tune in every day to the lives. I don't always get to the lives, but I always watch the restreams. And Alan, you're always on point. And I just wanted to say thank you so much. Kashina, thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate it. I'll, I'll let Crystal know too. And by the way, everybody, a special thank you to Jillian. She actually is my the only moderator I have. She <laughs> takes care of a lot, a lot of the comments and shit like that. that for I try. Well, YouTube, YouTube doesn't even show some of them to you. It's fucking crazy. Yeah, that's that's ridiculous. That's absolutely yeah. nuts. But I want to personally thank you myself. I really appreciate everything you've done for us too, because that it's something that's very hard to to, to manage to do while you're talking to people too. And my ADHD does. I there, there'll be like whole 15 minute blocks. That I don't even look at the comment section when I'm just rambling on. So I appreciate it very much, yeah. Sheena, Vlad. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Sean, everybody else that joined, Alex, uh, even um, the weird fucker, Mike, uh, who needs to lose 50 pounds. Thank you all for joining. I really appreciate you guys. And like I said, I'll be doing this more often. So everybody have a great day. All right. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Take care, guys. <laughs>